Hello and welcome everyone to the next episode on SAP UI5 and Fury training. In our last session, we talked about the concept of fragments. We have seen how to create fragments and use them when it comes to using it with the JavaScript. In today's session, we'll start with introduction of REST-based services and OData services. Then we will also discuss the architecture how SAP supports the OData based services. So let's get started. First, let's look at the solution of the last class exercise where we wanted to display the data selected by the user in the pop up on the input field. So let me go ahead and execute our application. So in here, we want to replace the value of the input field when user selects a value inside the pop-up. So the action here would be selecting the value inside a pop-up. So let me go back again and to our pop-up example. And here we use the event as select event on select value. Whatever you want to give. That's my event handler. And as usual, we are going to write this code inside the corresponding controller, which is in this case the view 2. And now what I'm going to do is I will use this object of the city, which is already present. This is the remote control. Yeah. And the very first thing which we would need to do is we need to find out which which element was selected by the user so this event object will tell us all the information so you can say selected item event object get parameter selected item i guess that should be the parameter name but we can check it during debug and then we will get the title Since we are using the display list item, the label will be this one, the name, which is what I want. And this value, we wanted to set it on to the input field on which the F4 was pressed. So how do we get the input field object here? So we say this dot SAP I get core dot by ID. And I will say this dot input field. dot set value and I pass this title in it that's all but now you will be wondering about what is this dot input field you didn't define this of course you are right let me go ahead and create this as a variable and this variable we will initialize right at the very next moment when user press f4 help on the on the pop-up so here when you are just pressing the F4 help event, you can use this event object dot get source dot get ID. So whichever input field inside table, you press F4 help, please get that ID. And that ID we will use to show the value to the user. Let's save this up. Come back. And let me select here, let's say Sempora Srinagar. And I will replace it with Amritsar. It's not working. Something is wrong. Let's press F12. And you can see it says assertion field managed object UI fragment encountered unknown setting select. So this event name select which we use is possibly incorrect at the at the place or it's not there. So select dialog. There's a it's confirm event. Yeah, good. Very good thought. You're right. I recall now. It's a confirm event. So let's let's try this Chennai. I will select Jepu and you can see the value has come as Jepu. Let's try Srinagar with Amritsar. You can see Amritsar. Pune with Kurukshetra. Kutch with Varanasi. Yeah, you can see the values are changing. Awesome. 
So that was the end of solution of last exercise. Let's move on and discuss with introduction of O data services. Because till today we were all using the local data set. All the data was local in my project. How can I now be allowed to fetch the data from real SAP system? So you need to understand first the concept of O data service. I understand many of you have never worked on O data services. You come from uh, ABAP background especially or any other background. So let me start with introduction of O data. What is O data and why we use O data is open data protocol. It is used to create rest based services. Initially developed by the Oasis company later acquired by Microsoft and made open source. Exactly. It's a myth in industry that OData is a SAP concept. OData is an open data protocol. It's an open source. And it is a Microsoft technology. It's a Microsoft technology. Yes. It's widely adopted by industry. Hence, SAP also adopted it. Why we use OData? It is used for REST based service creation. REST based service creation. Now, what is REST service? REST stands for representational state transfer, also known as stateless communication. So what is a stateless and what is a stateful communication? What's the difference between both? Let's understand REST versus stateful communication. So I'll take a practical example. Once upon a time, I went to a city called Gurgram for my training sessions. Yeah. So I went there. And there is a place called Cyber Hub in Gurgaon. And there is a big cafe shop out there uh, which is which is available on the Cyber Hub Gurgaon. And this place is very calm, neat, and clean place where I used to have my coffee in the afternoon time. So every day I used to conduct sessions in one of the corporate with the Cyber City. And Cyber Hub is next to it. I used to go there. I used to have my coffee at uh, at the showroom. So every day around 3 p.m. I go to the cafe shop. Yeah. And I order a cappuccino. I have my cappuccino, I come back. This process repeat for multiple days. Multiple days. I used to go, I order same, same time, same place. I used to offer cappuccino, eat, have it, come back. Now, once upon a time, I was not in a good mood. I went to this place and I this guy came and asked me again, sir, what would you like to have? And I was kind of not in a good mood and I said, Every day I come to your store, I daily have cappuccino. And why do you again asking this question to me every day? Right? So basically, this Starbucks guy, it asked me the same question every day. And then the day I asked this question to him, that why do you ask me this? He says, we don't store the customer information with us. What you can possibly do is, buy us a membership card and next day when you come you swipe your membership card with us and then we will have all your details with us and we will not ask you to give us all the details yeah so let's understand 
before membership card and after membership card process after i take membership card before i took membership card my communication with the starbucks was stateless and after membership card my communication was stateful why because i go i have my coffee i come back they don't know me and i don't care right they don't have any information after they process my coffee after they process my that order after i come out they don't have any information about me who was that customer no information yeah no information about me that's a stateless communication what is the advantage of a stateless communication a stateless communication allows this starbucks to process high number of request they don't have to swipe everybody's card a customer comes they don't ask a question they just ask one question what's your order that's all likewise so many customers who visit starbucks they can access the data and without starbucks really having a load on their system they can serve all the request high number of requests can be processed with limited staff members using starbucks because the communication is stateless starbucks has no no clue no information after the customer is left the table what is the disadvantage disadvantage is since there is no information stored about the state this communication sometime is difficult to log so but that's not a very big disadvantage because you can still manage some kind of a register where you can store this basic information now stateful communication in stateful communication i got to buy a membership card what is the advantage advantage is my experience is good but the disadvantage here is the cost is very high why because this card has a cost this plastic card has a cost and also this server where they store the data that also has a cost this server also has a cost and this card also has a cost and every time i go and punch in they have to do this and then they will be able to retrieve my state my information about who am i what i ordered last time what i like dislike experience is good but the cost of the system is very high so if you would like to serve thousands of requests parallelly without scaling your system up which type of communication is better if you want to serve thousands of requests parallelly or without scaling up your system where you want to keep the cost very low which communication exactly stateless is better and now my question to you all what is your current communication with sap gui when you use sap gui with sap server what's your current communication so when we use sap system typically we connect to any sap server what is this communication it's stateful why why because in basic abap sap tech training the very first thing you know that presentation layer application layer and database layer so whenever you connect from sap gui sap system creates a session for you which transaction code i can see this sm04 all the sessions which are created when user connects to an sap abap system sap system the sessions are created behind the scene for every user 
which holds all the information. Let me quickly show you that. So we go back SM04 and you will see here the session information. How many users are currently connected to my server? See, are you all clear? Now, how many of you face this problem that you went for lunch and when you come out, out of lunch back to your desk and see it, you saw that your, your SAP GUI session was expired. It got terminated automatically. Exactly. All of you face this, right? Why? Because there is a session. It has a cost. And if you're not doing any activity, you've acquired some system resources unnecessarily, which can be used by others at that point of time. So system terminates your session automatically after a certain period of inactivity to serve other people. Everybody is this concept of session stateless and stateful communication clear with example. Are you clear the example? So what is O data? O data is used for stateless communication, which means you can serve so many requests without really caring about who you are, who is the user. Yeah, of course you have to authenticate. It's not like anybody get a free hold of data, but what will happen is when, when a request is sent from the client, in this case, the client will be the browser, and this is our client. So SAP server will get the request, it process it, and it sends the response. That's all. It doesn't store any session like SAP GUI communication. Is this clear? So this way, without scaling too many servers, without adding so many SAP instances or memory, you still be able to serve large number of requests coming to you because there is no session persisted for each user or each call. This is called stateless communication. Yeah, stateless communication. Clear everyone? Stateless communication. We still do authentication. That's it's not like that. We'll see that once we go to the system, the stateless communication. So the OData is used for stateless communication. Basically, it provides you a service. You can call the service over the internet using the browser URL, and you can send the data, receive the data over the internet, over the browser itself. That's your OData. So as I told you, OData is a open data protocol developed by Microsoft. So where can I see, read more information about OData? So you can go to odata.org where you can read more information about OData. Here is where we can go and read it. So it's not a SAP pro protocol or SAP proprietary. It's Microsoft protocol. You see OSS is standard. Define RESTful APIs. RESTful APIs a basically representational state transfer. A stateless protocol. Okay. It is one of the best way to transmit the data over HTTP. And URL convention. Now, one more question. To build this O data, which technology can we use? What is the programming language can we use on server to build this O data? Is only ABAP programming can be used? No. You can use ABAP programming. You can use Node.js. You can use Java. You can use Microsoft C++, Objective-C. You can use Python. Any programming language you can use to build O data services. And one most important funda fox for all of you, never forget this. Peori only and only and only and only understand O data. Fury will not understand anything. It's a myth in the market that you can call a function module in Fury. You cannot. Can you call an ABA program from Fury? Can you call a transaction code from Fury? 
can you call a include program or a or a class from fury no fury only calls o data o data calls these things can you call a workflow from fury no you can only call o data and o data will have the code inside to call the workflow so fury only communicates to o data services okay how an o data service looks like so let's go and see some example so good news is even you don't have today an sap server what you can do is you can go back and check free services offered by odata org to learn odata so you can go to services.odata.org and you can see free services for your learning so i go with this one yes you can see free service you can see more services you see this one yeah so what are all the versions which are available for odata services there are up to three four versions available v2 v3 v4 what we use in fury is v2 and v4 v2 is is primarily used today 95 percent applications built today in sap standard apps i'm talking about even the custom apps they are all on v2 v4 industry still yet to adopt yet to adopt some people already started adopting v4 but yet to industry adopt v4 it's not fully supported right right now okay so that's why our goal will be learning v2 services in this course not the v4 so now let's go back and see some v2 service so i can also search v2 o data service and then we can say services dot o data dot org so i can go to v4 v3 v2 i can see any one of them so i'll go with this one o data service click on this you can see it's a plain simple v4 v2 o data service which is here so it shows me product data categories and suppliers data simple demo data it gives me free i can keep any data uh, any entity set and i can read it if you remember this is exact similar replica what you guys have did in the fruits json in the fruits json when you go don't you see there are three entity sets suppliers cities and fruits everybody what do you call them entity sets correct right exactly all three things do you see here products categories and suppliers is this clear yes or no everyone are you clear this part yes everyone this is exact same thing entity sets so whenever you call an audit service for the first time or in fact any time you will see a screen with entity set names so what is this whole whole thing which is at front of you is called it's called service document a service document will show us all the list of entity sets so let me go back and start audit example so very first thing when we call a service it loads a service document a service document includes multiple o data services inside multiple o data services inside each o data service sorry multiple o data entities in entity sets inside each service also has a metadata document which explains about properties inside of each entity metadata document which contains 
properties of each entity set let me show you so this is our service document so you can test it service document so this is clear now metadata how do i get metadata so i don't know inside categories or inside products what am i going to get inside products what are all the properties does it have a product id does it have a name price unit currency length of the product width of the product category of the product i don't know what are all it has i don't know what are all the category contains what are all supplier contains what do they offer like in our json we knew that fruits have name color health benefit these are the properties of the entity yeah so we don't know that so that's why we refer metadata document the service metadata you can refer by ending slash dollar metadata at the end of the service it shows all the entity types and entity sets yes entity type is the blueprint of the method it's a blueprint entity type is a blueprint of data set and entity set is the access point of actual data okay entity type just gives you the structure entity set will tell you the data so when we were binding can anybody tell me when we were binding the data which thing we were using when we wanted to show all the data in the list control or table what we were using in our path for binding anyone what we were using in the path for binding anyone aren't we using these fruits cities suppliers right entity sets we were using correct yes so that's what your entity sets are here same thing same concept an entity type is your blueprint of the data so you can access the metadata so entity sets we can already see in the collection of entity sets in the service document sorry so let's go back and now see the dollar metadata so i'm going to go back and i say dollar metadata that will give us all the list of entity types awesome you see product entity type it has id name description release date discontinue date rating price all the details are there yes and you see here category so you see category has only two properties supplier has four properties address has four properties five properties so these are all the entity types the blueprint of the data using the entity type the entity sets are created entity sets are created by entity type only they are the skeleton or the structure of the data and entity sets are created by these structures so yes there is a very good observation some one of you had now here can we consider one entity type or entity set equals to one database table yes good good thought exactly so if you have a database table you can consider one entity set as one db table correct correct but not always but in general you can consider that yes it's right and entity sets are created always with entity type we use entity type to create entity sets so we just copy this url so all this you can test it in your in your local machine even you don't have any server as of now you all can go back and test all these things in your computer without any server access at this point okay we'll discuss about server access also in our next class so now that is the basics of our data our service document metadata document let's go and hit some real data so to call the real data you should use entity sets suppose i want to see products data so go back and use that here enter and you see all the product data is coming 
but the default format of all the data which comes is XML it's XML and I want to see in JSON then I can go back and put question mark dollar format equals to JSON and now you see this data comes in the JSON format fantastic you can compare this exactly similar to the one which we had over here inside the one which we created locally yeah it had entity set and it has all the data in a form of array so here you see this array yeah and it has containing multiple records now okay. how do i see beautiful output is because i've added a plugin to my browser it's called json viewer plugin just add this to your chrome browser it's an extension it's free just add to your chrome browser also so that you will be also able to see the beautiful json output like i can see okay just add this plugin it's free plugin from chrome just add it to your browser you will see this beautiful output it will format automatically so we hit the entity set products and we put here a keyword called dollar format it's a odata definition keyword all the keywords in odata starts with dollar symbol in a small letter so we put that and now we get our data set here so this is how we can access the data so accessing a single data actually speaking behind the scene there is no magic there is some query which is getting executed in ABAP system or Java system or whichever server they've used whichever programming they've used they're writing some query behind the scene this is equal I'm writing a BAP equivalent this is the equivalent ABAP query there is no magic guys there's some query something is being written behind the scene okay so that's how you can access this now Typically when you work with any company, what is the format of the URL we follow? Anywhere you go any work any website anything in the world that this is the below format which companies will follow First comes his protocol Then comes his host name port number slash Then you have path prefix typically an odata will have SAP OPU odata SAP. This is coming from SAP system. Then you have service name Underscore SRV typically slash question mark URL parameter one Equals to parameter value M percent parameter two equals to parameter value like this you will have this is the format of the url how urls are made in the on this planet any url you will always see this format or any odata url to be very precise you will see this format so if you see there are different different components here in this let me just add them this is our first component This is our second component. This is our third component. This is our last component. This is our next component. Like this, we have different different components. Yeah. So let us go ahead and now understand this. So first is this one is protocol. Whether your server is secure or not secure as means secure it has a SSH certificate or not That's something which your network administrator will take care You can see this information in transaction code SMICM in SAP system Yeah, let me show you if you go to SAP system you can go to SMICM and you can go to more details and you can see this is my server address with HTTP 8001 is the port number HTTPS 44301 is the port number Okay, 
so that's a first part then comes his host name host name also you can see here this is host name along with port number both all details you can see for your company system also in your company system in SMICM so this is basically address of the server and port number port is the doorway to the server now this is called path prefix which can change but typically in case of SAP O data services which are coming from SAP system this remains fixed here comes is your service name actual service which you are calling sorry I missed out entity set name I missed out completely entity set name let me just add that so it will go little out sorry I can cannot I should write it in single line this is a syntax how you consume it okay this is a syntax how you consume it I'm keeping it little out so that we can see it in a straight line this is a complete URL address it will never change the, the format will never change this is your entity set the endpoint to access data and then we have parameters the first parameter always starts with question mark all the consecutive parameters will start with m percent so your first parameter starts with question mark and all the further parameters will start with m percent so you see this is parameter one its value parameter two its value and these parameters are different in case of odata like dollar format we have used today is one of the parameter we have dollar top we have dollar skip dollar filter a dollar count there are different different parameters we'll see the use cases uses of these parameters also this is the format let's compare it with our existing service format so you see the first is protocol HTTPS then is the host name there is no port number mentioned here because default port for HTTP is 443 so don't need to mention that if it's default this is the path prefix this whole thing is the path prefix then you have the service name audit SVC the service name this is the entity set products is the entity set I want to access products data this can change to suppliers or addresses or whatever depending on the data you want to access and this is your first parameter question mark your parameter name dollar format equals to parameter value everybody is this format clear is this URL format clear how we use URL format everyone is this clear URL format yes or no okay cool so let us move on now and see some action more action so first we just access the simple data all the records of a product but let's think an example again imagine you have an SAP system your SAP ECC system and this has data inside Mara table or VBAC table there are 1 billion records and this is your Fiori app running on mobile phone and you're trying to load now you send a request on O data and you get a response ideally and you say Fiori app send me the Mara data You've written a query just like I showed you last example select star from Mara and return it do you think this 1 million record will ever return go back to the mobile phone in the fury over the network over the internet will it ever work will your fury app ever work then how do we develop how are companies developing fury app if this is a problem how we learn from YouTube yes 
YouTube. These companies have taught us a lot. What YouTube does? If there is a two hour of video, does YouTube ask you to wait for two hour to, to load it? No. It starts buffering. It gives you two minute video first. And it starts the playback of the video. Video will start playing. By the time you finish watching two minutes, another two minute is loaded. Another two minute or four minute is loaded. So data is sent in chunk by chunk. Never, never at once. Because user can't watch all two hours in one go with one frame. It has to go by step by step, right? So screen by screen. So that's why similarly in a Fiori app, the mobile size width is fixed. 3.5 inches, 5.2 inches, whatever. You can only say hardly five records here. You can't show all the records and you show scroll bar. So what we can do is we can, when you request, we can only say, I will just give return 10 records. That's my chunk. Just like YouTube returns two minute video, doesn't return whole video. This is my chunk. When user scroll down, I send another request to load next chunk, next 10 records. When users scroll down another next chunk, scroll down next another chunk, let him scroll down 10, 10 records. If he has that much of time to load 1 billion records, no problem. If humans have that much of time to down, scroll down, scroll down 10, 10 records, fine, no problem. It's their wish, but nobody will do that. But for us to save our application being timed out, we need this mechanism and this is called pagination. Everybody, are you clear what is pagination? But how do we achieve it with OData service? So OData gives us amazing capability to achieve pagination. So let me show you pagination. So for example, in this right now, when I call the products, it's giving me all the products. You see all. I just want to load first two products. I can go back and say m percent dollar top equals to two. And now it gives me only two records. Fantastic. Everybody, are you clear? What is my chunk size here? Are you clear? What's my chunk size? No matter if you have trillions of records in database, doesn't care. It just gives you the chunks. You can decide the chunk size yourself. Yeah. Dollar top. And when users scroll down on the application Fury app, you want to load next chunk. So you say dollar m percent dollar skip. You skip the first two record and load the next two record. Dollar skip equal to two. Dollar top equal to two. Are you clear? So now it has loaded the product number two. It skipped the zeroth one and first one, and it has got me two number and four three number. Is this pagination concept clear to everybody? Dollar top and skip. This is equivalent in ABAP like select star up to rows. Yaad aaya kya kuch? Up to rows. Are you able to recall this concept in ABAP? I want to load up to rows. Why am I sensitizing you here? Because to, in coming days we will build a no data in SAP. This training is not just Fury, it's also OData. So you will also learn how to build them. That's why I'm sensitizing you all in here so that later on you can understand how to implement it also. Moving next. Now let's move on and see the next concept count. I wanted to just check the number of records. Come back here, put search dollar count. It says there are total nine records. So you don't have to read all the data on the front end to count the records. You can't say load all 10,000, 20,000, loop over it and start counting. You can't. Just say dollar count. It gives you the count of records. Yeah. So what's happening actually is it's count. 
behind the scene it's like select count star from db table hello everyone are you able to understand what am i doing yes i am right now counting products but if i want to count suppliers then what do i do what should i change in this url if i have to count suppliers what to do if i have to count suppliers exactly instead of products add suppliers fantastic so just go back entity set name was suppliers and you see there are only two suppliers in the system you want to see them no problem there you go you want to see them in json question mark or format json everyone are you clear or not basics of our data how to read these services you need to understand how to call them these services are very important you need to test them first in the browser so you're making a request via browser you're getting a response you want to see you want to see press f12 go to network tab press enter you'll see a request will go see this is the request this is your request you got a response this is your response request response architecture stateless communication are you able to understand is this part clear always you can see network call if you want to know ever any fury of which audit it is calling check the network call you will understand which audit service it's calling is just one click away awesome coming back so that was the dollar count suppose i want to filter now data so we can filter so i want to filter data all the products which has name as containing cola or which has price more than more than 20 rupees so come back and i say where dollar filter equals to price or let's say rating is greater than gt3 enter you can see rating is 4 only one product is there with rating greater than 3 everybody are you clear filter what do you think what is it equivalent of in aba programming what do you think what is it equal equivalent of in aba programming what select query would you write for filter filtering the records in your in your program where clause very good answer where clause your condition exactly it filters the records that that's this is your where condition actually can i do a where with like condition like type condition yes i can go back and i say give me the products where uh, it contains substring of where substring of name my name contains a value what is a value the value okay it should be i guess the column name and that's a second argument so it contains cola cola where where cola in name if this expression is equals to true get me the products you see have in cola only one product contains cola inside that's a like where like search it's a search actually the system is doing now i don't want to read all the columns i'm reading right now everything all the columns i just want to read id name and price no problem come back dollar select id name price and you see it just reads three properties now for each product you can use in combination everything yes one operation can be combined with other you can use filter select all together filter select top skip all together it's possible you can put them in any order doesn't matter yes so this is how you can see we've got certain certain columns i'm showing one by one so that it's clear so select few columns 
so what is it equivalent in above select column name exactly everybody are you able to understand what's happening on the back end side also is this clear what's also happening on back end side possibly yes awesome now moving next if you want to read data from two different tables i have two tables sales order header or maybe product and i have sales order item let's remove this otherwise it will create confusion so i have two tables they have a foreign key relationship in database level so as you know one db table is one entity so this will produce one entity like sales order header entity this is one entity and this one will produce another entity sales order items so can anybody tell me now if these are all my entities sales order header and sales order items what do you think what would it transforms to in o data the same concept so in in programming world in abap world or database world you will use a join inner join to read data right the same will transform into a association in o data this concept is called association so you will have at o data level an association between this sales orders entity and this sales order items entity in dono ke beech mein association aapko dikhega o data mein it's the same concept what you have at database level called join you will call it as association in odata this association allows you to create a navigation property to quickly jump to the details of the information navigation property we call it as it's possible only once you have association defined relationship defined then only you can do navigation otherwise you can't do navigation so let me show you in our current service if you go back currently when i go back to any product data i see product has a has a supplier okay product will have a supplier so right now i don't see supplier details here in the product database table of course you don't have supplier details but if i want to see supplier of this product i can directly come down and you see there is a supplier and there is this link so you click the link and then it will load the supplier data for that product awesome so this is though the data is distributed in two tables supplier table is separate product table is separate but there is a linkage between them this is navigation property this is navigation property it is possible only once you create association a relationship between them if you don't create relationship between two entities it is not possible you have to create relationship this allows easy navigation to the child so if i'm seeing a header i can jump over to sales order item of that header quickly using navigation property can i see this association somewhere yes you can see it in metadata go to metadata sorry and you can come down you can see these associations are defined these are the relationships you see product category and product association supplier and product association that's why you see navigation properties you see navigation properties navigation properties so that you can jump over to the corresponding details of the data yeah now i'll also show you another power of navigation property when i make this call i get supplier uh, product data if i got to read single product 
I can go back and read by passing key. So what's my key of product? It's ID. So let me pass here ID as let's say zero. It gives me single product now. So first of all, this is important single getting single record by key before we jump to association. So getting single record by key. This is equivalent to select single star from DB tab where your key. Now from here I can jump to any supplier or category of this product and when I jump it just shows me supplier data of that particular product. Yeah, but what if even a single network call in a single call I want to read both the product data also and supplier data also with association. You can come back and use m percent dollar expand equals to your navigation name supplier and it will read both product and supplier data in one single call. Eki call me dono data aage aapke paas. You don't have to make multiple network calls to read this data. So see above you've got product data and below you got supplier data in a single network call. Sometimes you may need it. Sometimes you may need it that in a single call read the principal entity and the dependent entity together. Yeah. So what is principal and what is dependent? Principal entity is your sales order. Dependent is sales order item. It's dependent on it. Yeah. So that's why. So this is equivalent to select star from tab one inner join tab two on condition. Everybody are you clear in a single call we got both the data together. That's why it's kind of inner join behind the scene. Are you all clear these basics of O data calls? Are all the calls are clear? Service call. So we started with service document, metadata document, selecting all the data for one entity, reading uh, fixed record pagination concept, reading count, selecting based on where condition, few columns, then the navigation property, and also reading key by uh, record by key on this planet now any o data in the, on in your life you ever work with these all things rules remain same that's why it's a protocol these rules will remain same on the earth any o data whether it is sap generated non sap generated you use it any o data on, on this planet you use these rules will remain same let me show you any other o data you pick up any random one maybe take this one to read the data of employees, I use entity set. I go back top question mark dollar format equals to JSON. I don't even give a damn whether it is built using Java, Node.js or ABAP. I don't care. I just know O data. And behind the scene, all the complexity behind the O data is there, which is up to the server side developer, not on me. I as a UI developer or consumer of O data never care about what database are they using what technology are they using so i as a ui developer never never ever cares about it i never cares about it i only and only care how can i consume data using o data how can i consume data using o data so maybe and i just now go and call this employee id one to get single record Now you may be wondering what is this this thing photo this big thing. This is basically a photo coming in form of a string. So you can never transmit a direct photo or video computer only understand byte streams. This is a byte stream. I can copy this byte stream. I can go to the internet and say decode image to base 64. Yes, exactly. So you can just just decode your image which is in the base 64 format. It's a string actually. Image is also transferred like that. So I can paste that string and say decode. There's some problem in this.
and try it's not generating it correctly there's some problem I guess in this code they have some problem but it will produce an image actually let me show you by producing okay I can't I can't okay so everything is transmitted via string so this is also happening here now maybe I can see if there is any navigation property come down we have a photo path at, at least for employee it's okay the photo itself is not working original one so like this you can see this service is also another order data service where you can call these things you can call order details orders see orders enter I say question mark dollar format equals to JSON give me only one order you see one order awesome I can get this single order anyway by passing its key so I go back here pass it as a key enter this is my order yeah order details so everything can work I mean all the what we learned these rules are same no matter whether it is built using node.js Java ABAP but in this course we will focus on ABAP programming if you're willing to learn node.js based auditor data development using HANA subscribe mana HANA native development course there are multiple ways to build audit services if you want to learn building audit services using Java subscribe my cloud platform development course if you want to learn building audit services using ABAP you are already at the right place in coming days we will build this audit in ABAP language okay there can be multiple ways but concept remains same from consumer point of view I'm done with today's class time for your questions next class topic next class we will discuss about SAP gateway service architecture fury architecture and then we will talk about server access how can you get server access to practice all these things okay all right with that thank you so much see you tomorrow at the same time have a nice day